Good afternoon. My name is Anna Balaj, and on behalf of Bosch Security and Safety Systems, I'd like to thank you for joining this webinar. Our session today will be a co-presentation with VDS and Megavir Corporation. VDS is Europe number one certification institute specializing in fire protection, security, and natural disaster prevention. In the next hour, we would like to give you an overview about the relationship between VDS, UL, and FM, and how VDS certified systems can be installed in an NFPA environment. Hope you will find our presentation interesting and we can open doors for future cooperation. Before we get started, some important technical information. The webinar is being recorded. We will make it available for you for later viewing. It will be shared on YouTube. Your questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. Please send your questions during the presentation via the Q&A section. You can do it anytime during the presentation. And we have muted all audience lines to ensure the good audio quality. Our presenter today is uh, Florian Schaar, who is a coordinator of partner relations at VDS. Dr. Schaar is going to talk about VDS approvals and its role in safety and security. And let me also welcome Leo Tubon on behalf of Megaworld and uh, Mr. Lito Katian from the Bosch Philippe office. And now, uh, let me uh, give the floor to Mr. Tubon to welcome the audience. Um, Leo, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, everyone. So, um, welcome my fellow uh, Megawatt engineers and architects, and also my colleagues in the power protection industries, ICEP and PIFO. Uh, to our boss partner, I uh, very much thank you for giving us this moment by unselfishly sharing your knowledge and expertise in the field of fire protection, particularly in the FDAS. Uh, to my colleague, uh, feel free to interact and ask questions later so that after this event, we have a clear understanding of this topic. Uh, Again, thank you very much to all the participants and back to you, ma'am. Thank you very much, Leo. And now I give the presenter right to Dr. Florian Schaar. Florian, the floor is yours. Yeah, right on. I am clicking and I hope everybody can see this fun presentation. Yes, we can see it. Thank you. Perfect. So, uh, yeah, good afternoon, good morning from Germany. Madagang Hapon, dear experts for optimal fire protection. It's a pleasure to be yeah, more or less um, here with you, with the IECEP and the Bosch team. And I hope we soon can do one real seminar because I totally love coming to the Philippines. Now, core question. Um, why should you spend the good next 40 minutes and anyhow care what I am talking about my institute? Because I have some information here that will hopefully cause you to say in a few minutes, yeah, this was totally helpful for my daily work and business. Unfortunately, we are in for a bad start with uh, some fire facts there is one basic issue i am hearing a lot from our partners all around the globe who are selling top safety systems and that is the customers usually stating hey uh, safety systems where the heck do i need that because i'm not a chemical plant i'm not a pizza bakery there's no chimney, there are no candles in my company, so there can never be a fire. So I'd like to support you with some helpful statistics if this is coming up. If you say, hey, I know all this already, give me some hands up in the Q&A box and then I'll skip this part. 
basically concerning the part that a lot of people say without open fire, there can never be a fire at my company. Any study I've seen around the world states that the main source of fire in all industrialized countries, Philippines, Germany, is always electricity. Catastrophes like this one pictured can happen from installation flaws, can be caused by simple aging in the ventilation, in the lights, in the computers, and also in the many sockets within every single building that cannot be switched off. So the fire threat against which you are fighting is affecting every single sector, every single building. We have 6 billion euros fire damage in Germany, $328 billion fire damage in the United States every single year. And while the fire itself is starting is quite harmless, a single kilo of burning plastic already creates up to 2,500 cubic meters of smoke. So when a computer burns, the product of this combustion is always hydrocyanic acid in the air, which was used as a chemical mass murder weapon in the First World War. And it was then banned in the International Land Warfare Act because it was so cruel. So in a fire, we have exactly this mass murder weapon banned for use in war in the offices, in the factories. By the way, Germany is known for an extremely high level of regulation and still there is a larger fire at a company more often than every five minutes. And another argument very often heard is people saying, hey, I have insurance, so if there is a fire, everything will be paid for. I don't have to worry at all. But after a somewhat larger fire, a company usually looks like this uh, lump of evil stuff, which you can see on the right. The ability to provide services is massively limited, no matter if it's a production plant, a shopping center, a stadium or anything else. Studies in the United States and Germany show that one year after a larger fire, only 26% of the affected companies are still in the market, around about a quarter of them. Why is that? Yeah, the damage is paid by the insurer company, okay. Quite often, even the business interruption is paid by the insurer for a while, but Fire destroys a company's infrastructure and usually special machinery is affected. And here we have a waiting period of at least six months in the current conditions, probably much longer for replacement. And it's also not exactly easy to get a special craftsman needed to rebuild such a severely damaged complex. So clearly after the fire, the companies can no longer supply. By doing so, forcing even the very best customers definitely to leave because no customer can wait for months, maybe even years for the next delivery. And this is what finally forces companies into insolvency after a fire damage. As our insurers say, when larger fires happen, the business interruption insurance only covers the time up till insolvency. Okay, we've had the bad facts. We will now also continue uh, bad facts, but we might also say fun facts. I guess we all have uh, read about the studies. How are people reacting to a fire alarm when a siren goes off, not the voice alarm, and you're expecting everybody to panic and run out of the building. But the standard reaction is to do absolutely nothing. And after a while, the people say, hey, turn off this damn annoying noise. Where's that noise coming on? And we have a nice example here of even the reaction of technicians to fire detection and alarm systems. 
this is a Moscow mall or this was a Moscow mall. And in the year 2018, the fire alarm is going off. And the technician on duty says, hey, this uh, fire detection alarm system, why is this damn annoying thing beeping and blinking at me? He's checking the cameras, of course, seeing nothing because the fire detection alarm system is working right, is going off at a very early stage. And he says, ah, oh, stop this damn beeping, blinking. He turns off the fire detection alarm system. And you can see the outcome in this nice picture. So let's say enough of these horror statistics. Uh, please give us some good news. I do, mostly you do, because you are safely protecting your customers human lives also the environment from these bad numbers by relying on the immediate and proven reaction of vds certified automatic safety systems because no matter whether it's the world cup final or the upcoming easter holidays the systems are safely watching 24 hours a day seven days a week 365 days a year as for yeah who is this vds guy we are a certification institute proving that the fire protection systems are really working so we are seen as the synonym for clearly proven reliability number one quality seal for fire protection experts in europe listed by governments all over the world also your beautiful philippine islands and easing the work of consultants, installers, authorities, and all further experts with guidelines renowned for practicality. Now, the one core problem with such highly complex technology as fire protection technology is how can we ever be able to tell if the systems are really going to work when a fire happens? if they will reliably protect my customers, even years after the installation. No one can ever ensure that by just looking at the systems. And this is why we are here. WDS is answering the one key question for everybody involved in fire protection technology. Will this really work in an emergency? Everything else, which specific system it is, the design, even the price is secondary. And that this core matter is definitely proven and ensured in practice can be seen at first glance with the VDS quality seal. You know, you can say, okay, sounds good, but uh, please give us some detail, give us proof. How can we be sure that VDS safely protects us? Because we are. I have to read this because I like the slang. Evidencing supreme reliability by practical endurance specifications. Same as, for example, underwriter laboratories or FM Global. The testing is subdivided into the two main parts, functional testing and environmental testing. Products and systems have to prove that they are effective at all times after artificial aging under a wide range of difficult environmental conditions using artificial aerosols, using real fire tests, and for extinguishing systems, even in exact replicas of the plant extinguishing environment. Basically, our job is to heavily mistreat the safety systems and then make sure if they still function. All this so you can see directly at first sight, yeah, this has VDS on it. This will save human lives and entire companies when I need it. Long term and also under any, even the toughest environmental conditions. We have two core points here on this slide, which I have directly underlined for you. 
because there is a frequent situation that our partners, consultants, planners, uh, installers report to us again and again. They are to install a fire protection system somewhere and the authorities require compliance with ISO or EN standards. Then maybe the operator states, yeah, we are part of an American cooperation, so our fire alarm technology must comply with NFPA requirements. And then also the insurance company comes along and demands, yeah, the system must be installed according to VDS guidelines. When this happens, like so often, those responsible, which are mostly you find listeners, usually ask themselves the following very important technical question, which is, why me? Hopefully, we can make your work much easier here. The VDS approved products like those of Bosch comply at all times with European standards, almost always with ISO specifications. And VDS approved products can always be used in installations according to NFPA 72. Also, if some of you are doing gas uh, according to 2001. For this, you will get written proof directly after the presentation. So with VDS, you are directly covering all relevant standards directly from one single source done. Yeah, VDS bases on the European norms, so I'll give you some little background here. In most countries, authorities, just like the company owners we talked about on the first slide, they say, uh, fire? What the heck is fire? Well, you probably know this nice song, fire, what the heck is fire? So, of course, if they act like this, sooner or later, a huge catastrophe is bound to happen, which in our European case was a fire at a mall in Brussels with 251 dead in the year 1967. And after such heavy catastrophes, of course, there's pressure from public opinion and media on the politicians, hey, do something. So they had experts create safety norms, like our fine EN54 standards for fire detection and alarm systems with test methods, performance criteria for effectiveness and reliability to be assessed and declared. Let me read all this to you. No, I'm just kidding. This is a little overview showing you all the brain power that is going into the European standards. Now, important point, the comparison between the EN and UL standards for fire detection control and indicating equipment, CIE. Quite everybody first seeing this wonders, yeah, but I thought these are two totally different standards. Why is that almost all the same? Basically, these standards are in constant flux we have a nice idea, good for safety, the Americans also add that. The Americans have a nice idea, good for your safety, we also add that. Totally fine, this is a copy for global safety. Now you can see, I'll um, go through the details, the only real difference is uh, a little below in a digital system fault. We have some differences concerning the humidity testing. Okay, this is more or less philosophical. You can say um, the EN testing is a little more extensive. The UL testing is a little more cheaper. Then we have the different in the fault signal. Uh, this fault signal is which must happen if, for example, a detector is being removed. I do not assume that anybody will die because of a 100 second fault signal difference, but you may want to keep in mind that uh, Bosch products give this important warning signal in half the time as UL products. Now then the digital system fault, 
we think this is very important and I assume that you all will take this into account in the next issue. But currently the status is only VDS approved systems like those of Bosch offer this, which means the increasingly important software within the systems, the digital part, is constantly being monitored, mostly by a watchdog program. And if just a single byte is missing or is somehow going the wrong way, your customers are instantly informed. Then you may be interested, the next point is silencing of sounders, which is exactly the same. Um, yeah, some people say, what, why the heck would I ever want to silence the sounders? This is when the fire brigade arrives. They like to turn off the alarm for coordinating their rescue activities. But if a fire breaks out at any other place within the building, then the alarm does start all over again. I hope you can read this. Uh, if not, and if you're interested in the really detailed detail, as I said, you'll get the presentation afterwards. Um, a little more comparison of the standards here for the heat detectors. If you want to check point four and five, you can see that UL is currently not ensuring the detectors also react in high ambient temperatures like we do. We think this is quite important, especially for the usual heat in most Philippine regions. Same for the smoke detectors. Um, you see the point two, ingress of foreign bodies. When I first read this, I said, uh, who the heck would want to ingress foreign bodies into smoke detectors? This uh, is mostly insects. And this was one of the main triggers of false alarms in Germany in our spring and summer when loads of insects are flying around. And many Philippine regions always have German spring and summer temperature. And as we know, the frequent false alarms caused by those reflecting insects, they make users hate the technology. The intrusion of bugs or other insects can be prevented by a very simple cheap grid. And I strongly assume that in the next version, UL will reasonably demand this. Maybe you're also interested in point, fee, uh, point four, repeatability. We are measuring the testing results six times in a row to make absolutely sure that the detectors do not just contain a random luck generator, but that they really work. And point six, we perform all tests with 20 detectors to make sure they all react the same way. Yeah, I like those pictures, so I have to show you on the Left side, you see the smoke duct, which any certification institute has to buy for tests according to the European norms. It creates artificial smoke aerosols and measures exactly how many of them are in the air when a detector reacts. On the right, you see the wooden box in which the American Institute's ULFM are putting burning cotton cords and then are counting the seconds till the detector is going off. Another important assurance for you and a unique selling point for VDS is the system approval. Both the European standards and the American standards, of course, they demand, they demand product testing. They have planning and installation guidelines, but only the European standards are clearly demanding system testing here. And the reason for this is um, each of us knows the case. We have a system in which, uh, let's just say, 100 parts are installed. 
99 of them are working perfectly. One is scrap. Then there is unfortunately a pretty good chance that because of this one scrap product, the entire system will not work, cannot save anyone, cannot protect any building. With VDS approved technology, this cannot happen because we always ensure the safe functioning of all components in their interaction as a system. Also at full capacity like power for FDAS or the highest water pressure for extinguishers. This is why our approach is called the all round worry free solution by governments, by consultants and other fire protection experts around the entire world. Now, if this is so important, why isn't everybody doing this? Because it's very expensive. Manufacturers change one component and they have to pay for an entire system test again. But Bosch is doing this, is paying this for totally ensuring the proven safety of your services and your customers. Very important point because of the prominence of NFPA around the world. Since National Fire Protection Agency is a US standard, people sometimes assume listed means UL listed. But NFPA by no means requires that testing and listing shall be based on an American product standard. NFPA 72 leaves this open by purpose, allowing for solutions that provide an equivalent or better safety level, as you can see on the right, which is taken from chapter 1.5. They want to see a regular monitoring of products, of course, done by VDS and any EN Institute because it's important. They want to have a competent organization accepted by authorities having jurisdiction. Yes, VDS is number one in Europe and accepted by authorities all over the world, of course, including the Philippine ones. So products approved by VDS, always also certified in accordance to the EN 54 series can be used anytime in NFPA 72 installations. Maybe good to know for you, we are state accredited, of course, for 100% independence and highest objectivity. We are backing you with unique expertise gained in more than 30,000 system inspections every year, so we know exactly where to look for finding the flaws. And our core job, our mission, is to detect any possible flaw in a complex technology immediately and not while fire is raging when every second counts. Then one more thing that could be important for your work. A very big player in the safety markets are the insurers. And when you are dealing with them, it uh, should could be helpful to mention that VDS was founded as the official sprinkler testing laboratory of the German insurers. Sprinklers, because in 1908, it was the only safety technology existing and is still 100% owned by the German Insurer Association with uh, worldwide active members like Allianz, FM Europe or Munich Re. And of course, with annual payments for fire damage amounting up to 2 billion euros every single year in Germany alone, they keep a very close eye on fully reliable safety technology. Then our cooperations, you can of course see FMUL here and of course all the top European laboratories. And some nice quotes from our ULFM acceptance agreement partners, if this sometimes comes up and may be important for your work. Then an important work, our own standards, the VDS guidelines. 
which are set to ease the work of consultants, installers, and further experts with renowned practicality. And we have the guidelines for product systems, planning, and installation. Free download of all guidelines for products and systems. Unfortunately, for P&I, they are charging, but I'll have some um, takeouts later for you. They are preferred worldwide for highest precision and reliability. Also, details later. They are making us very proud named technical holy books by the safety and construction press. All the downloads at vdsshop.de slash en. Why is that in italic? Unfortunately, the shop is currently being made over the international version. So um, you can only download from the German version at the moment. If you are requiring some guidelines, just send me over a mail and I will send them over to you. And within the next days, you will get them. So, just a little example from our product guidelines for CIE, um, a little summary. So you can see what uh, Bosch systems all have to manage, all have to master for getting VDS approval. And just if anybody wants to read this later, I've taken out the example of fault monitoring. Now, one core cool point, we have so many detectors. Uh, the question is always, what kind of uh, detector shall I use? So I've added this little slide, hopefully also helpful for your work. Basically, we can say that in any standard atmosphere, we always have the standard smoke detector. This is why I did put this bigger than the other ones. What you should always look out for in the standard atmosphere, mostly offices, is places where smokers could gather. Because if smokers are gathering somewhere, say it's too far to go out, let's just uh, go up here down the hall or somewhere in the corridor and let's have some cigarettes. Danger of the smoke detector going off, so it's better to put some additional safety detectors in there. And then we have a highly important point here. We are starting with these very nice pictures, what construction work is looking like according to the advertisement industry. And a not so nice picture of what a company is usually looking like if there's a fire and the FDAS or the detection system in its whole is not working. So you see on the top left, the uh, wonderful advertisement marketing pictures. And if the fire happens, what you see on the left is, I guarantee, a 100% genuine and realistic picture of at least the owner who has some millions of fire damage going after the installer, possibly exactly looking the same, the insurer going after the installer. And yeah, quite often both of them going first of all after either the planner or the installer and in case there is the so-called people damage we have a nice saying here then the judges the authorities they are looking definitely for somebody to crucify and they are looking as long as it takes no matter how long it takes until they find anything for which they can crucify somebody if, for example, you're looking at the earthquake in Turkey just a few days, weeks ago, it took them five to six days to get all the survivors from the collapsed buildings, but it took them only three days to arrest people who the authorities say are to blame for the buildings breaking down in case of earthquake. So what is highly important here is every time you are doing something, uh, managing something, doing anything with the owner or with any authority, anybody involved. We know that a lot of operators, they like to use WhatsApp for communication with planners, installers. Please do not do that because if something happens years later, WhatsApp will be gone and you will not have any proof that you've done anything together with the owner. So please always, if there's WhatsApp or something coming, do anything 
repeat that by email, do a protocol by email, do anything and never do it just in Word. Always with email, giving you the safe set and of course, save all the emails for anything you are managing with the operator, with the insurer, with anybody. And bonus, because if anything happens, then usually the people say, okay, then uh, prove to me that you have installed the system in a safe way. How do you prove that? A little tough, but what we have is the VDS guidelines for planning and installation of fire detection and alarm systems, VDS 2095, currently in layout. It's coming out within a few days, maximum weeks. And if you can say, oh, I'm so sorry, but um, I've installed the system according to the German standard, then I would definitely say you're on a safe side. I've added some information here, um, just taking it out for facilities for person in need of care or disabled person. You will have all the stuff in the guideline. If you're interested in this, check out the PowerPoint or the full guideline if you like. Also, some information on the semi new multi sensor detective. If anybody's interested in this, check it out after the seminar. It is this too much detail for us here, but you may want to check out all the standard fires that the Bosch technology has to go through to get VDS approval. One thing that might be important for your work is if you look at um, fire test fire number six, which is the so called messy related spirit. This is basically uh, alcohol fire, which is burning with a lot of flame, but with hardly any smoke at all. Which uh, before Corona was not that important to us because uh, not too many companies have masters of alcohol within their ranges. But when this wonderful Corona epidemic started, suddenly there were masses of disinfectants stored in almost every office. And these are mostly based on alcohol burning, burning with hardly any smoke, only with the flame. And also everybody is talking about climate change. So we are getting more and more thunderstorms and we have a guideline on over voltage protection. Unfortunately, at the moment only in German, but what I have done, I hope this is helpful for you is summarize the core points for you. Also, if somebody wants to check out if they say this is helpful later after the seminar, I hope I can support you with this. So. The core question when it comes to fire protection technology is always, does the whole thing work? And the mission of VDS is to answer exactly this core question for you. You can tick off this highly important point and concentrate on all the other difficult planning and consulting issues you need to focus on. We are taking this very important duty off your back because you will know long term reliability is made visible at first sight. I hope this was helpful to you to our joint cause of protecting human lives and costly properties and the environment. If you like, check the VDS LinkedIn channel for all guideline news. Yeah, this is our standard ending slide, but we have all been so serious for so serious for quite some minutes now. So I say we're ending with a nice slide with best greetings from the German Oktoberfest. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you very much, Florian, for this excellent presentation. <clears throat> As uh, Florian mentioned during uh, the, the session, within a couple of days, we are going to share the presentation with you, but now, the time is uh, for questions, so we are waiting 
for your questions, please enter uh, whatever you would like to ask from Mr. Rio, from Florian, or uh, from Mr. Joselito. Just enter it into the Q&A and we will answer it. Hello, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Sir, ma'am, there's a question uh, in the chat box. Is VDS in the same industry as FM Global? Uh, yeah, definitely. FM Global is an insurer and we are a technical service provider also of an insurer of the German Insurer Association. Um, we were a direct daughter, but we were now released into the market in 1997. So we are now on our own, but still a 100% subsidiary of the German Insurer Association, which, by the way, also has the member FM Europe. So, yes, we are in exactly the same industry as FM Global. Okay, thank you very much, sir. There is also a question. Is there a code reference that requires notification? Um, I guess I would need some more information for answering this. Okay. You could give me some more detail. The guy who was asking this, um, either on the speaker or just with some more written information. Um, Mom, can you give more information regarding Yes, that yes, question? yes, later I will. <clears throat> okay. Um, is there a code reference? that requires notification devices at PW, PWD areas, like PW toilets, like that, sir. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm afraid what I will have to do is I'll copy that, and then I'll have to ask the experts at my laboratory because this is going out of my range. Um, Senor Caramancion, if you could please send me an email F char at VDS. So I will have your contact data or just enter your contact data here if you like. I will copy the question. I will ask the laboratory experts and then I will be back to you. Florian, I can see the contact data so I can provide it to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Um, another question, sir. Do VDS provide safety test report? tested in EN standard with standard equivalence to UL or FM, uh, NFPA approved standard? Yeah, definitely. What um, BDS is always providing for every approved product and system is a testing report known for very uh, being extensive. So we have a lot of information always in a testing report, which we hear from our customers is easing the work of the consultants, of the installers, of everybody working with this. Um, we do not have standard equivalency officially to UL, but as you could see in the comparison, which I had for the control indicating equipment, those standards are very, very similar. Still, we have different philosophies, but we are, have a full coverage for the fire detection alarm systems for NFPA. So yes, we have total standard equivalency or the outcome is the same because we are fully accepted according to NFPA installations. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, we have also another question. Do we have a table of comparison with VDS and UL listed devices to counter those UL requirements? Yeah, what I have is um, basically only the slides which I have put in the presentation for the CIE, for the smoke detectors, and for the heat detectors. I hope that will help. If you are looking for all the VDS approved devices, check the VDS homepage, VDS minus global.com, and you can see every single VDS approved device listed there, which all you can use in the NFPA installations, which I hear also required in the Philippines. Okay. Uh, next, sir. How do you compare VDS to LPCB? 
Well, LPCB is a strong partner institute um, and we have full acceptance agreements and we are also cooperating closely in writing our standards. Before the Brexit, LPCB was also going according to the European standards. And since the English at the moment, they do not have their own standards because the Brexit is relatively fresh. So they are currently writing something which will be quite similar to the European standards. Basically, both VDS and LPCB are covering the European standards and they are putting some add ons for optimal safety. So we are definitely cooperating and um, you can see some very, very strong similarities between VDS and LPCB. Also recording uh, resulting from our cooperations. So if you have LPCB anywhere, it's uh, no problem to also check that with VDS approval. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, do we have a copy of the BDS UL acceptance agreement? Yeah, you're also the same. I can send it to you if you like, or you also go to the VDS homepage. As always, on the top right, there is this little, I don't know how to call it, this uh, glass you are using for seeing things bigger. The um, search Magnifier. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Um, you just enter VDS UL, then it will spit out the acceptance agreement. Uh, next, um, oh, it's quite long. When an ongoing project specification specifies a standard or requirement other than EN54, is there a way to introduce EN54 or to link EN54 to NFPA so that the new proposal using EN54 can be accepted for review? Yes, I hope so, because um, what is usually required is NFPA. So if the authorities are requiring NFPA installations, you can always come up with the VDS product with the, um, also EN54 approved because VDS is always including EN54. And you can always use VDS in the NFPA installation. So this should definitely be possible because the outcome is the same. You will have a safe system, which is fit for NFPA. Okay. Uh, next, sir. Which is more stringent in terms of test methodology? EN standard or UL standard? Nice question for me. <laughs> Um, what I will, of course, say is the VDS standard is way better and way safer and much more helpful for you. But if you ask a UL guy, of course, they will say, yeah, but the UL standard is much better. What I can say, what I'm hearing from our partners, authorities, uh, installers, planners, consultants all around the globe is that they say the VDS standard is known to be more severe. And as you could see in the comparisons, um, that the VDS testing is usually more severe than any other institute in the world. So I say, of course, I say that because I'm working for VDS, uh, say we have the safest, strongest standard in the world, but a lot of neutral people are also saying this. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, next, is the VDS already, already recognized, accepted by the insurance companies in the Philippines? Yet it depends on what insurance company you have. Um, it should be accepted, but I can speak for all the dozens of insurance companies you have there. We have a quite strong, as far as I know, factory mutual. We have Allianz from Germany, Munich Re from Germany. Of course, the German insurers, the European insurers are always accepting VDS. FM Global is accepting VDS because we are a partner, hopefully. If not, just give me a mail. And as for the Asian insurers, they should be accepting VDS because it is known for a strong call for the German insurers and for the NFPA compatibility. So I hope they are accepting. If you are having problems with insurers accepting, also please just write me a mail so I can check what I can do. But it should definitely be accepted because it is a very strong worldwide renowned standard. Okay, sir. Um, okay. Um, how will be BDS be liable 
if there will be a failure incident. Do VDS test like UL, UL to test only few items per batch manufactured or each item will be checked and tested by VDS? Absolutely everything. This is uh, one thing I can guarantee for VDS approval. Every single item is tested. Then not only every single item like the um, Americans are testing, because what the Americans are doing, they are connecting a single item to the CIE, see if this is working. VDS is always ensuring that the system is working in its entirety for your optimal safety. So we are always testing the entire system. And of course, then we are doing market surveillance. We are going into the manufacturer's places, checking to make sure you are getting exactly the same product and system quality that we have in the laboratories when you are buying and using those products and systems. So you can definitely rely on this. We are testing and approving this. Okay, next, sir. If we are going to use EN54 standard in the design, are the LGU here in the Philippines recognized it? Yeah, this is what I heard from our partners and um, also from ISCP and Bosch that Philippine authorities are fully recognizing the European standards and so, of course, also BDS. Okay, next, sir. Where or how can we purchase or obtain training for Bosch fire alarm system? It goes to me or to the Bosch guys? I can answer. I can answer this question. So we have a platform called uh, Bosch Security Academy. Please check bossecurity.com website. You need to register and then you will be able to see what kind of courses we have. So if uh, you would like to get uh, even direct information, you can contact uh, your local representative. But you can also send this question directly to me if you cannot find it. Yeah, also same from my side, if uh, your engineers, if IACP is interested in this guideline, I mentioned the VDS um, 2095, which is coming out within the next days or weeks for the planning and installation of FDAS. If you're interested in trainings here, we can also set up something yep. either again online or in person. If you say this is of interest for you, please also just let me know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will inform you, sir. I'll just ask my colleagues. Okay, next, um, can you mention projects in the Philippines who already implemented EN54? Uh, I think I'll answer this one. Okay, um, for the group, um, we at MegaWorld uses EN54 uh, for our FDA system, and as of now, we have not met any uh, objections or uh, disapproval from the uh, BFP or the LGUs. Okay. Uh, next question. Ah, okay. So, Pinus lang ya. Okay. UL standard for smoke detectors already in UL268. 7th edition. What is the VDS testing comparable on this new edition? Um, for the smoke detectors or for the CIE? Because if I remember correctly, the 268 is for the CIE from UL. Okay, maybe, sir, it's a uh, how about for for smoke detectors, uh, what is the difference or uh, adapted on the new version of the VDS? Yeah, if you want to check out, you just um, type into the internet. If you're interested in the CIE, you type in VDS 2540EN and you're getting a direct free download of our standard for the CIE, what they all have to do to get VDS approval with all details. And for the smoke detectors, it's 3131EN, VDS 3131EN. 
And if you say I'm interested in smart smoke detectors, VDS 3438EN, and also if you are interested in any other guidelines, uh, yeah, just write me a mail over there and I will send them over to you. Okay, sir, so, but we can also access that on your website, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but unfortunately, the international webshop, uh, webshop is currently being set up, which should take a few more days. Unfortunately, you can at the moment access only the German webshop. You can download all international stuff there. You have the international text, but it might be a little difficult because it's German. Okay. But if you go uh, through a search engine and type VDS guidelines and then any uh, word you won't have, like CIE or smoke detectors, then it should also spit that out. International version is, of course, available. Okay. Uh, let me see. I think there's no more questions, sir. Nice. Yeah, perfect in time. Yeah. Yes. So if, if the participants also have some more questions later on, uh, you can email me or us here so that we can email you also the quest, uh, also the answers. Okay. Thank you very much, Rio. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you very so. much, Florian. This Thank was you. a really excellent uh, session. So yes. I'm going to. Uh, edit uh, the video and make it available at YouTube. And then this will be part of uh, the mail that you are getting uh, from us within a couple of days. Okay. Thank you very much, ma'am. And sir, thank you very much. Wish you a very nice afternoon and uh, for you, Florian, very nice day. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so thanks everyone... to everybody who was there. Thank you. Yes. Everyone, thanks. Po. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Bye. Bye.